Dude, let's just talk about it now. All right, fine. Let me tell you I, something. Honestly, I don't have to review, right? but... Well, here, I can talk for a while. Okay. I am pretty sure that if you take out any matches involving tables, ladders, I already chairs, know where you're going with this. <laughs> thumbtacks, fire, or anything where somebody fell off something from a great height. So, hell in a cell, okay? If, if we're merely talking pure... In ring professional wrestling, okay. Going back to primetime wrestling in 1989, I am pretty sure this was the most violent match I have ever seen mm -hmm. in the under the auspices of world wrestling entertainment. At, at the bare minimum of that, I would actually go farther. I would say this was the most violent match I've ever seen where no one actually suffered a severe injury. Okay. I I including barbed wire, tables, ladders, cages, whatever you want. They just destroyed one another over and over again. For 25 yeah. minutes. Now listen. Oh, God. I would have said, I would have said that this was among the greatest violent matches I've ever seen in my life, if not for the fact that they actually hit each other too hard in some unsafe places at times. But I will say that I would say that 80% of the violence in this match was easily tolerable. Maybe tolerable is not the right word. I couldn't tolerate or say that much. But listen, there's the old saying, hit each other really hard in safe places. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would say that 80% of this match, they hit each other very hard in safe places. Now, there was, without a doubt, some strikes to the face. Yes. Where they hit each other way too hard in the face. Yes. Open hand strikes and everything like that. And the thing about open hand strikes is you think that because it's not a closed fist, ah, it's just an open hand strike, slap people, whatever. I mean, I've said this before, but there are WWE women. I'm not even talking men. Women, okay? And this is no disrespect to women, but the fact of the matter is, Valter's going to hit you a lot harder than, for example, Brie Bella. Or, or can we agree true. on that? Okay. I suspect, suspect that's true. Women have given each other concussions in WWE because they slapped each other in an angle. Okay? So that's what we're talking about here. Now imagine a near 300-pound man slapping you as hard as he can in the head. All right? Over and over and over and yeah. over again. So there was there was too much of that for me to say that it was like one of the greatest violent matches I've ever seen. Because they actually did probably do some real damage to each other. I guarantee it. But 80%... You just look at everyone's body. Like, their chests were destroyed. Mm -hmm. Their backs Dude, were destroyed. Dragunov's back was chopped up. I have never seen that before. Walter, The, the well, back of his neck is all welted up and red. The story of the match was that early on, Walter gave him the sleeper suplex and he dropped him on his neck. Yes. So, for 18 minutes or so... Well, it's not, it's not even that. It's when he threw him... like he, he looked like he was throwing him out of the ring, but uh, Dragunov took it throat first into the ropes. There was that, too. But yep. the point was, the neck was injured. Yes. And so, for 18 minutes, Walter worked on this guy's neck. And a lot of that was attacking the, quote, neck. But as noted, a lot of that was he was chopping him high on the back. Sure. That's why his back's all fucked up. So, listen, I don't want you to chop people in the neck. Chop them in the back, okay? But there were some to the face. I do want to mention one thing here, because Buddy and I actually did something once that inadvertently may have been more violent than anything that happened in this match. Oh, this I got to hear. Okay. I don't want to... It was a total accident. So, and I hate to make this part about me, but I just have to bring this up because I may not have the Liar. opportunity to bring this up again. <laughs> so listen, we were doing a cage match. And by the way, I was going to win the titles in the match on top of everything else. We were going to do a match, and I think it was me in a handicap match against... Buddy and Richie in a cage up in Cloverdale. So I was going to be sent into the cage, and Buddy wanted me to blade. Yes. I'd never done this before. Vinny knows where this is going. I do. So what happened was he taped around my fingers. You ever seen Ric Flair, how he has, like, tape around his fingers? Like, all of his fingers have this tape on him? We are just destroying the business right now. Okay, so we, we would tape around the fingers... And then you tape a little pocket right there. And then you cut the blade. It's a very, very small blade. And you put the blade in your fingers. And there's a deal where you can, like, 
push and the blade comes out and you cut and then you move the blade back down. Okay. I follow I, you. I'd never done this before. So Buddy gets the tape and he's back there and he's making, he's all uh, glitty. He's, he's gleeful and giddy. Yes. yes. Glitty for what he's going to make me do tonight. So he's taping up my fingers and he makes the gimmick and he's showing me how to move it up and down. And he, he, he put a few of them. I think he put it like on a couple of fingers just in case one fell out. Yeah. Because I'm not getting away with not blading. That's his, that's his deal. Yeah. So do the match and, and the part of the story that I normally tell because it's the gigging part is I push the blade out and I went, and I say to him, did it work? This is in the middle of the match, because you don't do it beforehand. No, it would be ridiculous. And he goes, nothing came out. Do it again. So I panicked, and I just started going, just sliced up my forehead. And even doing all that, barely any blood came out. But anyway, the, the thing that I wanted to say that was worse than anything in this match was, we used to chop each other. Shot the shit out of each other. Not like these two guys did, but we came out of many matches with bloody chests. So, what? How many? How many blades he put in my fingers? Like they were all out. <laughs> and we start doing this match, and we're going back and forth, and I'm fucking chopping him, and he's going ah, and I just figure he's selling, and I just fucking keep chopping him. So anyway, we go to the back, and his fucking chest. I swear to God. It's like, it looked like I was trying to cut open like a dead fish. He, every blade, just fucking sliced him every time I chopped him. And his whole chest has just got lines of of cuts from, from these blades. But anyway, nothing like that happened in this match. But that's an example of what we wanted to do was you hit someone really hard in a safe place. No one gets hurt. Everybody goes home happy. That's what they did for... 23 minutes of this 25-minute match. But there was probably two full minutes of slapping each other in the face, mm -hmm. like sweats flying. Oh, yeah. Just fucking brutalizing each other. There's another sleeper suplex on the floor. Yes. I might add. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't really see the landing, but, bro, I'm There's pretty no good sure... way to do it. I'm pretty sure he landed right on his head. Yeah. Well, the good way to do it is you flip all the way over. It landed in your belly, that's true. Yeah. yeah but I, I think he landed on his head. But it's one of the most violent things I ever saw in my life. It is the violent, the most violent, strictly professional wrestling match I've ever seen in WWE, bar none. Mm -hmm. There's few matches outside of WWE that with no gimmicks would compare to this. But it's pretty much, it's a must-see. You have to see what these dudes did to each other in this match. From, from... <sighs> it's, it's hard... To encapsulate everything here. So, yes, they beat the shit out of each other. There's no doubt about that. But the other thing is they work so damn hard. Because they're hitting each other as hard as they can really, really fast. And they're bumping all over the place. They're running here and there. They're doing dives. Dragon Off is doing dives. They're suplexing each other. They work their asses off and then killed each other. And they work their asses off and they killed each other some more. You know what it was like? It's like a match where they called everything in the ring, and there wasn't even anything to call. Like, the back and forth with strikes was so quick and back and forth and violent that, I mean, it had to be, all right, well, we're going to go in, you'll neck the rope, I'll suplex you on your head, I'll beat the shit out of you, and then you make a comeback, I'll drop you on your head outside, yes. and then I'll hit three moves and pin you. All right. And then the rest of the other 24 minutes was just, we are going to beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing to call. No. There's nothing to memorize. It's just, we're going to violently beat each other and focus on the neck, and that's it. Like, two minutes to go over this match and then go out there. I'm just going to read a small portion of my notes here. Uh, they hit each other more. Do these men know it's a work? These fucking elbows. These fucking slaps. I'm retiring again. Nigel says, it is matches like this that made me glad I'm retired. And it was at this exact point when they were doing like a test of strength, and Walter had the Greco-Roman knuckle lock, and from that position did a curb stomp, only he did it to Dragunov's throat. <laughs> now, I'm sure this is a great work strike, and my evidence for this is Dragunov is not dead, but God, it looked violent. 
looks so brutal. Well, dude, then, I mean, all of the times that Walter just kicked him in the face, like Dragunov would make this huge and, comeback, and and Walter would just give him this gigantic boot to the head and kill him. And, and often, every one of them looked awesome. And often with the toe of the boot, not was, the flat. <laughs> so, Lord Almighty. Nigel's beside himself screaming about Giant Baba and Jumbo Saruta and Bruiser Brody and how this is da- as dangerous as all of them, and I'm sure he's right. And eventually, after <laughs> 20 plus minutes of this beating, Dragonov's life bar ran out, and Walter grabbed a sleeper, and that was the end. Oh, it wasn't even that. It was like he kills him outside. He gives him a suplex. This is a spoiler, by the way. Not that you're still listening if you don't want a spoiler. He gives him the sleeper suplex onto his head outside the ring. He picks him up and power bombs him into the apron. Yes. He throws him in the ring. He power bombs him again. He goes up top and crushes him with the big splash. Dragunov kicks out, and then Volter puts him in the sleeper. Dragunov is half sleeping and half snoring and half screaming, and the referee calls for the bell. I was like, he's dead. He did not win. The other man is the winner <laughs> Walter. and the champion. Walter has slain this man. He's the undisputed champion. There is no dispute. <laughs> oh, no, no one can argue. This is a poor decision by the, on the part of the referee. There was no controversy. There was no, uh, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that was unique. The other thing is it, it, it's practically an empty building. Way less than you've seen the Performance Center or, or the uh, uh, the Capital Wrestling Center, whatever it's called, or the Thunderdome. There's some people in there, but like a dozen maybe. But you barely even notice because the guys in the ring are, A, slapping each other so hard, but also shouting and grunting and roaring and wailing so hard. They made their own heat because they're awesome. I mean, if you would have had this in a, in a packed building of people going crazy, I mean, it's probably going to be a better match because the crowd would just be going absolutely insane. But there is value. To being in an arena with nobody, mm-hmm. and you can hear everything they're doing yes. to each other. It's no fun. This never really happened to me, but to be in a really big building packed with people, and someone's hitting you really hard, and no one can hear it. That sucks. Mm-hmm. In an empty building, no one took one violent move that the world did not hear. Oh, God, no. So, there you go. And I've, heard, I've heard many people t- talk about... UFC and boxing this year, and they have a newfound respect for what these people go through because without fans, they realize just how hard they're hitting each other. And this is a similar thing. So there you go, everyone. That was Valter versus Ilya Dragunov. I can confirm it was better than Saturday night's main event. Dave nonchalantly threw out five stars in the Observer. He literally just goes, it was a five-star match and keeps going. <laughs> what? Dude. Minimum five stars. If we're breaking the scale here, this is a minimum of a five star match. Like what? it's better than virtually anything I saw in this year's G one. I guess I could go back and watch everything again. I mean, my favorite match was Ibushi and Suzuki, and I guess I could watch them both and and just. But why compare? It was as yeah. good as the best stuff in the G one this year, mm-hmm. and it was on a WWE show. Yes. You could argue that the style of wrestling they did is certainly not everyone's cup of tea. Lord knows, Lord knows that's the truth. But for the style they were working, there's nothing they could have done to make it better. So by that definition, it's a perfect match. And that's a five-star match. That was a... Well, I mean, they could have done something better not hitting each other in the face so much. But, but as that's far the, as like the that, story That is the, the match, style they were working, though, Brian. Yes. <laughs> so far this, and, this, and the other thing, too, is there was a story. It wasn't just massacring everybody. I mean, they did... But it wasn't just like, let's do wanton violence. I mean, they had a very simple story. They told the story. I'm not even watching all of NXT UK, but watching this match in a vacuum, I mean, the story was perfect. And the people that do watch NXT UK regularly, I mean, the story is even better, I'm told, because it plays into everything that's happened in the feud between these two guys. So it's a masterpiece. Go watch it. Yes. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. 
Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.